According to this voltage tester, this is a properly working outlet. However, when I plug this light into it, the light doesn't work. And look what happened to the voltage tester. The lights went out on it. And if I plug this into another outlet, it works just fine. Let's try plugging it back into this one. Same thing. So what's going on with this outlet here? As it turns out, this outlet has a loose upstream connection. Notice also, when I plug these needs of this multimeter into this outlet, I'm reading 122 volts, which is what we would expect to read. But when I, when I plug this light in, it drops down to just a couple volts. So this is a compromised voltage source and the issue is being manifested under load. When I pull the light bulb out, it goes back up to 122 volts. So why is that? In this video, I'll show you how to test for a loose or floating neutral using a traditional voltmeter, a low Z meter, and a non-contact voltage pen. This video is intended for professionals that have a need to conduct such tests. I'm wearing rubber gloves and safety glasses, and this is what I recommend that you do. So we have a problem with this outlet, even though the voltage tester says it's good. But again, the voltage testers are looking for open lines, and this is not an open line. This is a loose neutral. It's a type of a neutral issue that is a result of an upstream loose connection that causes the outlet to fail under load. So I want to show you how you can test for a bad neutral by having a load in the socket. And as you noticed, the voltage dropped down to around four volts. When I turned this light, I turned the light off, it goes back up to 121 volts. I turn it back on, and it drops down to just, a, just around four volts. So if we had a, if we have a floating neutral, what happens, or a loose neutral, that neutral is gonna go up to the level of hot, because that because if hot is okay, it's gonna stay at 120 volts. And if the difference between hot and neutral is only four volts, then that would mean that neutral is, is, is at somewhere around 116 volts. Neutral should always be at zero volts, very close to zero volts, give or, give or take a few tenths of a volt. Um, so anyway, yeah, so what we can do is we can put one lead in the ground and one lead in the neutral. And it's showing 118 volts. So neutral is obviously way above the ground level, should not be up there. So that tells us we have a, float, uh, a loose neutral right there. It's neutral is reading 118 volts. A neutral could go the other way too. It could also go if you have uh, shared neutrals and uh, a circuit and you have a load imbalance what have you other loads can cause a voltage divider and cause neutral to go the other way so we have actually a much greater voltage across here but that would show up with no load on it this is a this is a non-low z meter so it doesn't put any load on it to speak of and if you had a loose neutral that was due to uh, an unbalanced load where neutral wasn't ultimately connected upstream and balancing the load out, you could have a higher voltage than 120 volts. And that's not the case here. This, the case we have here is that upstream loose connection to the extent where it's causing this outlet to fail under load here. So we put the load in it and it drops down to a few volts there. Here. So how would you test an outlet like this if you didn't know that it had an upstream loose connection that only failed under load? Well, you could use something called low Z here. I'm going to switch this to low Z mode. And this inserts a resistance in the circuit, a low resistance or low impedance, if you will, since we're dealing with AC. But that low resistance is about 3.2 kilo ohms, which is going to be typically very low compared to the upstream loose connections that can cause issues like this. So now let's see what we get on low Z. So now we're only reading 11.2 volts. So this low Z mode tells us that we have a bad, that we have a, an issue with this outlet, whereas 
on normal volt reading mode. It says we have a good outlet. So if you don't have a low Z meter, you can't tell typically that this outlet has issues. But now that we have a low Z meter, we can tell. Now what is this caused by? Is this caused by a loose neutral or is it caused by a loose hot? Well, there are ways you could find out. And a low Z meter, what you could do is you could measure from ground to hot here and see what you get. In this case, we get 122 volts. So that tells us that the hot lead is okay. And by process of elimination, that tells us that there must be an issue with the neutral line. Okay. However, I got to mention that if this was a GFCI, that you couldn't do this because the low resistance of the meter will trip the GFCI. It will cause a lot more than six, the threshold of 6 milliamps to flow. It will trip a GFCI. So you can't do that on a, on a GFC outlet, GFCI outlet. If you want to do that, simply just put it under load. Stick the load in there. And then when you do a ground to neutral measurement, actually you should not use low Z. I would not use low Z because it pulls them together. And it's not a good method of determining whether you have a floating or loose neutral by referencing ground. Because low Z will actually pull it down to ground. Just put it back on a regular volt reading mode. And what that tells you is that look at that. Look at neutrals at 118 volts. So this obviously has a compromised neutral. So we're using this low Z meter in its low Z mode in combination with this low Z and its uh, regular mode uh, by plugging the load back in. And that'll tell us that we have a floating neutral. But all we need to know that if this outlet is compromised is simply just the low Z mode right there. Low Z tells us we got 11 volts with 3 kilo ohm resistance across the outlet. And a regular voltage reading mode tells us we have. So that's where the beauty of low Z comes in. So how can you tell if you only have a voltage pen? The voltage pen is a very handy way. If you know how to use it and you know how to interpret it, it can give you a lot of information, a lot more than most people think. So normally a voltage pen is going to give us, on a good outlet, it's going to give us a reading on the hot, like this, which it should, and no reading on the neutral, because neutral should be zero volts, right? What happens is when neutral floats and you put a load in here, and you only have a couple of volts difference between the two, by definition, neutral is going to be up close to 120 volts. So if you only have a couple of volts across here, that means that hot is around 120 uh, with respect to ground. That means neutral is, is around 118 with respect to ground. So neutral is being pulled up because there's a loose upstream connection. So if that's the case, this should signal on the neutral side when I put the load in. If that's the case, that tells us we have a floating neutral. So the voltage pin is indicating that neutral is getting pulled up to 120 volts when we plug this in. So that's a really good way a voltage pin can tell you if you have a, a loose upstream neutral with respect to this outlet that is causing this outlet to fail under load. That's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel.